I mean, we're just the air conditioners walking around on this planet screwing each other's brains out. That's so true. I never thought of it like that. Oh, I love you. There's this idea in audiences of modern media that violence is unnecessary, that drawn out gory scenes have become too much too many and that they exist only for the shock value rather than for any narrative gain in films or shows one may watch. Do I agree with this statement? Well, yes and no. While I do believe gory scenes are unnecessary most of the time, I also believe there's been an overabundance of gore and violence in media for the past three decades. So anything that has gore or violence for narrative gain is overseen. Gore has become so prominent in our media now that the genre of torture porn has been created, movies under this genre being The Human Centipede and the entire Saw series. The point I'm trying to make with this is people aren't really shocked by gore now, they either enjoy it or get tired of it, and this can lead to a gory scene having the opposite effect of what a director or writer had originally intended. So, where does Devilman Crybaby fit into this? Devilman Crybaby has the big three, drugs, sex, and violence. It seems today. Right out the gate, the first episode shows us not just excessive scenes of sex and drugs, but violence as well. When watching for the first time, this might seem to be too much, and it's definitely something that'll give your grandma a heart attack. But I don't think any of this is unnecessary. It's all essential to the themes of Devilman Crybaby and immediately sets us the tone of the show. If you've never seen Devilman Crybaby before, I highly encourage you to watch it. But for the sake of this video, I'll give a quick rundown. Akira Furo is a regular high school kid who's a bit of a dweeb and cries for anyone. Any sad news or upsetting situations get his waterworks going and it's a distinct trait of his. His lifelong friend, Ryo Asuka, is a professor researching demons and devils and wants Akira to help him with his findings. Through a traumatizing event, Akira becomes a demon himself, which obviously means he's sexy now. Now, we're sexy! <laughs> and we follow Akira and Ro as they try to learn of this new demon phenomenon. To clarify, I'm not talking about the original Devil Man, not this one. Real. Hello. But the 2018 version, Devil Man Crybaby, okay? Okay. Now let's continue. The themes of Devilman Crybaby are humanity, morality, mortality, love, and if humans truly have the ability to control their instinctive urges such as sex and violence. Of course, Christianity is part of this too, but it has nothing to do with questioning of faith and is instead a gateway and metaphor used to question the themes originally stated. So going back to the original themes, what better way to open a series with those themes other than showing people giving in to those instincts at a party called the Sabbath? Straight up, Devilman Crybaby is telling us what they're all about. They're showing us animalistic, raw humanity, and they're telling us it's gonna be a wild ride from here on out. Not only that, but this scene plays a crucial role in telling us what demons actually are. I think the Devilman Crybaby writers did a fantastic job with this, because demons and devils, in a sense, have either become desired or a straight up joke. You ask a lot of internet dwelling millennials if they'd fuck a demon, and they'd probably say, hell yeah, why not, as a joke or in some cases, not as a joke. It's like how Twilight turned vampires into these stupid creatures that glitter and look sexy and now no one can take vampires seriously. They're just not scary anymore. Devilman Crybaby fully acknowledged this, acknowledged that the concept of demons and devils aren't really scary in this day and age. So what do they do? They show us four full minutes of demons mutilating and brutally murdering people. We're treated to repulsive visuals of human bodies contorting and breaking to turn into these disgusting, horrorish creatures that have no logical form. These demons aren't sexy. Well, say for one, maybe, if you know what I mean. Speak for yourself, motherfucker! These demons are nightmarish, and Devilman Crybaby is telling us that they ain't messing around for what demons in their series are. Another scene I remember many believed was more for shock value than anything else was the scene in the stadium where one of the runners turns into a demon and goes on a murderous rampage. I highly disagree with this scene being purely for shock value. In fact, I don't think any scene in Devilman Crybaby exists just for shock value. Yes, this does include the scene of Akira jizzing on his ceiling, 
because that whole episode centered around his innate sexual desires and his inability to quench them. Anyway, this scene in question starts with a famous runner turning into a demon, with dozens of other people trapped in the stadium with him, and there's nearly three minutes of him horrifically murdering the majority of them. Why is this necessary? Why are we seeing three whole minutes of this? What's important to note here is this scene is doing more than one thing. The first thing it's doing is showing us the lack of control this human turned demon has. Demons being a metaphor for the inability of holding back animalistic human instinct. It's not showing just the audience the violence though, but the people living in the world of Devilman Crybaby. They're watching this out of control demon, this aggressive, terrifying being mercilessly killing dozens, which is what starts the literal apocalypse of mayhem and destruction in Devilman Crybaby. This entire scene is also meant to emphasize Real's lack of humanity and empathy, because he literally has none. At first, this makes us believe he's just psychotic, because who in the world can watch all of this with a smile of all things? But if you've watched Devilman Crybaby, you'll know Ryo is actually Satan, which is something not even he knows at this point, and this urge he has for death, chaos and destruction is all foreshadowing for who he really is. This scene also emphasizes Akira's humanity in comparison to yours because even though this demon is going on a rampage, he still shows empathy for him. Not only that, but this whole scene is just terrifying to me. The shot of all these helpless people reaching out of the gate and begging for someone to open it still haunts me because it just upsets me. Overall, the violence in Devilman Crybaby holds very heavy significance, scenes in the last episodes especially using it to emphasize that humans can be just as cruel, cold, and heartless as demons. That the barbaric instincts humans all contain can manifest into something more and turn us into monsters without a hint of mercy. It's asking us the question, is humanity something beautiful? Is it the connection of emotions between people and the desire to love? Or is humanity terrifying? Is it a disgusting primal urge to destroy anything we touch and something to fear. Well, that's for you to decide, and the two main characters embody either ideal, but eventually one ideal seeps into the other and we're left with a heartbreaking ending. Devilman Crybaby is a work of art to me. I'm a sucker for things that question humanity and the existence of mortality, hence my love for Neon Genesis Evangelion, and I really hope people can appreciate Devilman Crybaby in the same way I did. This anime made me feel such a range of emotions and is such a fantastic example of how to use violence as a necessity to the narrative, not just as something for people to go what? Thank you for watching. I usually forget to mention where these anime are available to watch, and the good news is Devilman Crybaby is a Netflix original. I... Yeah, I couldn't believe it either, but there it is. I would love to hear your thoughts on this anime and what you think its message was, so drop it in a comment and let me know, and I'll see you in whatever I make next.